Yo dudes! Welcome to vegan meal prep rainbow style! So the whole idea about eating a greater variety of colours is that it's super high in antioxidant. Antioxidants slow down free radical damage, keeping you looking young, beautiful, slowing down ageing and keeping you more nourished and happy! Woo! Okay, so we're, in this meal prep we're going to cook enough food for four days, obviously breakfast, lunch and dinner. We're going to start with dinner, which is a roasted medley of veg with tempeh and sweet potato. Really delicious. With the roasted veg, we've gone for lots of different bright colours. So pepper obviously will give fantastic colour, nice crunch and sweetness. Courgette's a bit more watery. Fennel gives a fantastic aniseed note. And the pumpkin gives a real sweetness and a nice starchy kind of texture as well as the colour. Meet the Poitiers Marron, as it's known in French. Hakaido. Hakaido pumpkin. Uh, they're naturally really, really hard, so just be careful. First step, hands out of the way. Chop out the top. Hold it flat. Knife sticking in the top. Hold it there. Bang against your hand until you reach the bottom. Come in again, your hand the other side, and just uh, boom. Uh, you have to really commit to chopping a pumpkin and just make sure and watch your hands and fingers because you really want to, they're very important not to be. Next step, just take the seeds out. Again, these can be kept for later and you could roast them if you'd like. In our case, we're just going to compost them. Okay, so perfect. We're just going to put a little bit of salt, a nice pinch of salt on top of that. Lovely. I've got a decent kind of uh, coarse, fine sea salt. Coarse, fine sea salt. Okay. <laughs> coarse sea salt. Uh, and I'm just going to put a little bit of oil. I've got olive oil here. I've got about, so we're going with about two and a half tablespoons. Yeah. And then get your hands in there and mixy mixy. Just make sure your hands are clean, obviously. Okay, we preheated the oven to 180 degrees. I'm going to pop these in for about 25 to 30 minutes. Okay, next step, sweet potato time. As we've often said, most amount of minerals of any root vegetable is in the skin, so just give it a good wash. Cut out any knobbly bits or bits you really or don't kind like of to look. Pull off any of the hairs. There's often kind of roots, little baby roots off, and you just pop them off. Uh, and then we're going to chop them into. We want these to be reasonably chunky, so I'm chopping them kind of into big wedges. So you'll kind of notice that they're really there. Okay, so we chop the sweet potato into wedges. Once again, pinch of salt and about a tablespoon and a half of oil and just mix them right the way around it. And with these here now, just add something a little bit more interesting. I'm gonna pop in a little bit of cumin seed, put in some fennel seed if you like fennel, or even caraway seed is another suggestion. We're gonna put these in the oven and bake them for about 30 minutes as well, until they start smelling fantastic. So while the roasted veg medley is in the oven, we're gonna make our lunch. What's for lunch? This is an epic lunch. So we're gonna do turmeric falafels, we're doing spinach hummus, we're doing a beetroot flatbread, and then we're doing a simple salad to go with it. Oh, well, the veg is in the oven. Okay, you will need a food processor. Into the food processor, we have two tins of chickpeas. So these are 400 gram, net 280 gram of chickpeas. We drain and rinse them. One red chili, if you like it spicy, leave it out. If, if you like it spicy, include it all, and the seeds, if you don't, leave it out or else just remove the, the seeds. I'm gonna go in with about half, because we're kind of we're kind of Irish lads. We're Irish, medium spice. Yeah. Okay, we've got two cloves of garlic peeled. Obviously, they're gonna go straight in. I have one little baby onion I'm gonna chop and peel, or peel and chop, and add that in. I'm not even gonna chop my food process. I can do that, I'm just gonna pop them in. And he goes. And then we've got our herbs. I've got a, I'm gonna put in Flat parsley. Kind of we go. Decent. Do you want a bit of mint? I think I want to go with a little bit of mint. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna make these slightly a little different. And as we said, we want to make this super high in antioxidants. So Dave's going with a big chunk of flat parsley. Typically, you go with coriander. Flat parsley, people can alternatively go with. I'm gonna go with a little bit of mint, just for an extra little. I've about a handful, about five grams. And that's grams. about ten sprigs of flat parsley. I've just taken the stalks off it. Okay, traditionally in falafel it would be a lemon, but our lemon has turned orange. We're gonna go with a blood orange, just to make this super high in antioxidants, super aspirational. Okay, so just so got, squeeze it through your hands to avoid any juice of one orange or lemon, one citrus fruit of choice. Okay, time to add our spices. Grand cumin. We're going to go in with one great big heap. I'm going to go with two tablespoons of grand cumin. One, in. Two, in. Bum, bum, bum. Next step, we're going to add a bit of smoked paprika, often not typically in a falafel, but it's just going to increase the oxtail flavour. I'm going to go with about half a teaspoon. There we go. And I'm going in with about a teaspoon of salt. It's a little generous. Okay, a bit of teaspoon of salt. Okay, black pepper is always great because it kind of balances that kind of heat. It's coming back at the throat heat as opposed to just straight down. So we've gone with about half a teaspoon. And then the most important ingredient, obviously, to help it go yellow is the turmeric. So we're going in with about a teaspoon. So it's about a teaspoon there. In it goes. Bingo. 
And we're gonna, we're not gonna blend this until it's smooth because we don't want it to be a hummus. So we're just gonna kind of pulse, pulse it, it lightly. <laughs> okay, after tasting it, Dave just said there's something missing and lo and behold it is... Tamari. Just needs okay. tamari. Okay, just to bring in that umami flavour, just add another depth of flavour. I'm going in with a bit of tablespoon. Okay, realistically that's about two tablespoons. That was a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half. Okay, in it goes, quiz. Boom! Beautiful, lid off. Bingo. Okay, we're going to pop it into a bowl, just because it's easier to shake them before we fry them. Okay, I've got a pan on a high heat. I'm going to go in with about a tablespoon of oil. So while Dave's doing that, I'm going to take our little falafels and I'm going to just shape them. Preferably, they're easier to fry if they're kind of a flatter round, almost like a, what do you call it, a UFO or a kind of like a little uh, spaceship, spaceship. spaceship-like size. So they come together really nice. Dave's extra dish of tamari has kind of helped with the cohesion. Okay, we've got 14 falafels from there. I'm just going to add them into the hot pan and start frying them. So in our last meal prep, we used soup for lunch. Falafel is so much more satiating and better, so that's what we went with this time. Yeah, these are beautiful. As, as you can see, they're quick. They'll take kind of four to five minutes to be done from start to finish. Oh, they brown up quick. Okay. Uh, one of the benefits of this is you don't have to cook all the falafels in one go. You can do them in two batches or three batches, or do them when you want to eat them, really. We're just doing it for visual, just doing them all at once so you can see. Okay, so we fry the falafels for about two to three minutes, just until they're kind of golden and crispy on each of the sides. They might appear a little gooey now, but don't worry, as they cool down, they're gonna crisp up. So while Dave is finishing off the falafels, I'm gonna make a spinach hummus. This is a beautiful, vibrant green hummus that tastes fabulous. So you're gonna need a food processor. In the food processor, I have two cans of chickpeas that I've drained and rinsed. Okay, we have two cans of chickpeas that we've drained and rinsed. In on top of that, I'm gonna add in four, even five tablespoons of tahini. So tahini's ground sesame seeds, if you don't know, it's really high in calcium, great source of calcium, and really kind of like sticks to the top of your mouth. I love it, I really, really love tahini. Okay, so I've gone with four tablespoons of tahini, which might seem like a lot, but this is gonna add the whole fat, it's gonna make it more rich, creamier, and more delicious. We're gonna go in with a decent pinch of salt, I'd say something like a teaspoon of salt. Good. I have a decent kind of pinch of black pepper, in it goes. In on top of that, I'm gonna add in about a tablespoon of cumin, which might seem like a lot, but it goes wonderful. Ground cumin, yeah. Ground cumin, yeah. In a hummus, I think it goes wonderful. Adds that extra dimension to it. Okay, so in on top of that, we've got two cloves of peeled garlic. I've got a good, generous handful of baby spinach. So this is 50 grams in total. In uh, it goes. Uh, we put in juice of half a lemon. I, I couldn't find lemon, so we're going in with some orange instead. It'll give the same kind of citrusy, lovely Just taste. Just a little bit sweeter. We're gonna blend this to start with, and then we're gonna add in some water and a little bit more oil. It's better off to add this in as it is blending, because then you can hit the perfect texture that you like. Because hummus is quite a personal thing. So we're gonna blend this up. So as that's blending, you see it's actually blending to be quite smooth. I wanna make it a little bit runnier, so I'm gonna take one tablespoon of water, two tablespoons. Beautiful, it's blending a lot smoother. Three tablespoons of water, and we're gonna get one, two tablespoons Two of tablespoons of olive oil. The olive oil is going to really help emulsify it and bring it all together. It gives a nice kind of creamier, smoother texture. And oil, you think it's going to make it runnier, it actually makes it creamier. It actually creates more of an emulsion. We make about, about half a ton of hummus a week, so... Uh, we make a lot of hummus. We make a lot of hummus, so... Okay. Okay, so we blend it up until it's nice and smooth. Again, adjust seasoning if you want to, add more salt or whatever, but to us, that's lovely. Okay, so I've knocked off the oven there. Our roasted veg and the sweet potatoes have been in for about 25, 30 minutes. I'm gonna knock it off, leave them sit there until they stew nicely and roast up even nicer. Next step, let's make our beetroot flatbread. I'm gonna fill two eight ounce cups of Two eight ounce glasses. Two eight ounce glasses of oat flakes. Okay, so we're going in with two eight ounce glasses of oats. If you do one. want it gluten free, use gluten free oat flakes. Good top tip, Steve. I love Thank it, I love you. it. So, in terms of flatbreads, it's usually a 50% hydration, isn't that right? Yeah. I like technical terms like that. Okay, these are beetroot flatbreads, so I'm gonna take a quarter of a small beetroot. So, that's about that much. So, it's approximately about 40 grams, and I'm gonna chop it up nice and fine, just to help my blender. And Stephen, if I can't get fresh beetroot, what would I use? 
backpack. Beat root will work perfect too. Beautiful. So in goes our mug of water, our eight ounce cup of water. Decent pinch of salt, approximately a teaspoon. Little pinch of black pepper. Bump. Lid on and let's poise her up. Okay, so, boom, I do like that. Pan on a high heat, I'm gonna pop in a drizzle of oil, probably about a teaspoon there. I've got a little bit of kitchen roll, I'm just gonna wipe around. Very important, this is a non-stick pan, so I just put in a super light covering of oil just to help seal it. Here's our batter, let's pop it in. Really shallow covering of the flatbread. Because as we said, this is a flatbread. There you go, bingo. Quite important is, I like a plastic spatula, I find it very, it's a lot easier for helping turn your flatbread. So once it starts to crisp up around the edges and you'll start seeing those nice little holes in the middle, it's time to flip it. Okay, so I'm taking a gamble here. So make sure it's nice and loose and then just give it a quick bit flip. Oh, nearly. Nearly, but still pretty, good, pretty good, good color. Okay, we're gonna just start packing these up. We're gonna use just four simple containers. Use whatever containers you want. So in goes our flatbread on one side of it, kind of the base, because it's the basis of our lunch. We're gonna take our hummus. I'm gonna pop in a little bit of hummus all over mine and just spread it about. Okay, time to make a quick salad. We have radicchio. This Carrot. is in a traditional Italian leaf that's quite bitter. Kind of goes nicely in contrast to the rest of the ingredients in the dish. This is a long leaf one, just chop it in half like that. Cut out the heart. We'll just make it release its, it's kind of leaves easier. Something like that. I'm gonna start grating in, I have one carrot, and I'm just gonna start grating that in. Just slice up the uh, radicchio into small. Okay, so grate down to the number of the carrots, bingo, done. We've got all our radicchio here, I'm just gonna add that in too. I have some white sesame seeds, just a good generous pinch. Another generous pinch. I've got a nice, decent pinch of salt. I love my salt. And I've got about two tablespoons of olive oil. It's just a very simple salad. Okay, so we're gonna pop a little bit of the salad on here as well. Uh, and then finally, we're gonna split the falafels between them. So there's about three per, per little dish here. Okay, so there's one extra falafel. I'm gonna taste it. Mm. Delicious. Yum flavour. Yum, 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 yum. Very nice, nice and spicy. Okay, so there's our four lunches done. Nice, simple. There they are. Packed full of colours. Wow. Our veg has been in the oven for 30 minutes. Time to take it out. It smells fab. Wow, look at the colours. Beautiful. I love the way the fennel has just gotten long and kind of stringy. Uh, out comes our sweet potatoes. Again, these look beautiful and caramelised. Beauty. Okay, so now we're gonna finish off our dinner bits. We're gonna cook our tempeh. So I've got a nice pan, I'm gonna pop it in a high heat. I've got a good clump of uh, ginger. I'm gonna go with a nice thumb-sized piece of it. Again, this is organic, so I'm gonna leave the skin on. Just chop it into nice little bits. I've got about a tablespoon of oil I'm gonna add to the pan. Okay, might seem like quite a lot of ginger, but it's well worth it, and it goes great with tempeh. So in that goes into the pan. Half a chili, in that goes. I'm gonna leave the seeds in, leave them out if you don't want it spicy. Voila la tempeh! Tempeh comes from Indonesia. It's a whole soybean curd that's been partially digested by the culture. Worthwhile seeking out because it's nice and grizzly and very meat-like. This, this is a 300 gram block. If you can't find tempeh, tofu will work fine. So we're gonna chop into, in, this into eight slices because again, this is meal prep for four days. So we wanna make eight, so two a day. One, two. Three, and a little bit extra for the lads to try now. In they'll go. In with that one. Okay, tempeh goes fantastically well with tamari. Uh, and if you're new to our channel, tamari is just a soya-free, not <laughs> free soy sauce, sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go in with about two tablespoons. Maybe like two and a half. Okay, and just keep it moving, because we want that tamari to coat the base of every little bit of tamari there. So this is before we flip it. Once it's started to evaporate, let's flip it. Okay, that's evaporated. Okay, time to turn them. Ooh, so you get a nice, nice bit of caramelization in the bottom. So while the tempeh is cooking away, the heat is still on. I have about 50 grams of spinach. I'm gonna add that in on top. That's just gonna wilt down. It's gonna add a little bit more moisture, a lot more nutrients and color to our dish. Beautiful. 
<coughs> so we'll leave it sit there. I'm going to knock the heat off and leave it there simmer away. Yeah. So while that's happening, we're going to divide up our meal prep bowls for our four dinners. Okay, let's, we're going to divide up our roasted veg, our medley of veg, in on top of the base. So be nice and generous and try to get a bit of each variety of veg in there. Okay, so now for the tempeh, just to top it all off. So there's two pieces for each bowl. And we had one final bit of tempeh for us to taste. Mmm. Oh, I love tempeh. Mmm. Mm. It's so grizzly and meaty and almost sausage like. Mmm. Mm. Mm. Fabulous. Okay, so lastly for brekkie, we're going to make rainbow chia seed puddings. Really, really fantastic. So I'm going to start with three tablespoons of chia seeds. Yeah, These are a coagulant. So we're pouring that in on top of a large bowl or a pot, whatever you have. In on top of that, take a vessel of choice. In this case, we're using a, a, a glass. So I'm going to put in two glasses of oats, whatever glass you're going to be using to put these in. So that's just standard rolled oat flakes. If, obviously, if you're gluten-free, just keep them gluten-free. Okay, on top of that, I'm going to put in a little bit of flaked almond. So that's just a generous handful of it. In a blender, fill a glass full of oat milk or milk of choice. I've got two ripe bananas. In they go. We're going to go, go with about a teaspoon of turmeric, and that goes. It's going to give a nice yellowy texture. And I'm going to give them two tablespoons of maple syrup. Yum. Uh, lid on top, and we're going to blend them up. Okay, blend it up until it's nice and smooth, and then we're going to pour it in on top. And don't worry if it feels quite loose. It's going to thicken up and form into a perfect birch or muesli or cheese seed pudding. So we've got four vessels, all the kind of, we couldn't quite find four the same, but we've got two and two the same. So just fill them three quarters full. Okay, just give them a little bang just to remove any air bubbles and just eleven them out. In on top of that, we've got 125 gram of raspberries. Just pop them in on top. We're going to split them between the four. And last and final step, just to make this a super rainbow. Kiwi! And a little bit of mint. Okay, there you are, breakfast. So we have these beautiful rainbow chia seed puddings. Delicious, Looks fabulous, perfect snack served with fruits. And for the ideal dessert to complement this rainbow deliciousness, we, we have, have bounty. bounty. So if you're looking for the Bounty Bar recipe, just click it just here. Here's the recipe. Simple, easy, tasty, and even better than the real thing. There's our vegan rainbow meal prep. Fantastic for your health and happiness. And on the topic of happiness, we have a new book! This is our book three. This is called Recipes for Happiness. It's our best book yet. We're super proud of it. Uh, I'm really, really delighted. It's available to pre-order. Link just down below. Uh, it's on Amazon. You can get it anywhere in the world. It is fantastic. We are so, so proud of it. Um, this vegan meal prep video, rainbow, super high in antioxidants, high in vitamins and minerals. Stephen, can I cut up each of these component parts? Yeah, instead of, as Dave might have mentioned there, it's quite aspirational. To some people, you might want to do the full thing, you might just want to do the lunch element, the dinner element, cut it up the way you want. But there's lots of epic recipes in there. And on the topic of recipes, we upload a video on YouTube every Tuesday and every Friday. Just click subscribe. Um, and also, if you want to check us out on Instagram, we do a daily kind of Instagram story. We put up photos there, so you can follow us on that too. Um, thank you for your following. We really appreciate it. Thanks for watching thus far. And best of luck with the vegan meal prep. May you eat your vegetables. Cheers. Cheers bye. bye.